Hello everybody, I'm going to give you an overview of how to write a compare and contrast essay. First of all, I borrowed this from the Santa Barbara City College. So let's go through it. Comparison, we know are going to be the similarities. A contrast, we know will be the differences. And here, if we're going to write a compare and contrast essay, we should have a purpose. What's the point we're trying to make? Are we trying to clarify? Are we trying to add new insight? make a better focus or are we trying to show that one subject is better than the other here we know that the thesis which is in the introduction can show compare contrast or it can be both now if you're going to do a compare and contrast the same points should be discussed for both subjects so if you're going to talk about uh, the wealth of a certain country, you should talk about the wealth of both countries that you're comparing. Then here, some organizational patterns. How are you going to set up your compare and contrast essay? We can do it by the block method, which is subject by subject, point by point, or we can do comparisons followed by contrast, or we can switch it. We'll give you, or I'll give you examples of each as we continue. Before we go down to the examples, it's very important that you use connectors to hold your paragraphs and your ideas together better. Here are some words for similarities. Here are some words for differences. These to me are like road maps. They're like signs. If you're driving down the road and you see the word, word stop, you're going to stop. If you're driving down the road or you're reading an essay and you see, in addition, you know we're going to add information. You're giving your readers a heads up, a sign of what's coming. So this is good for cohesion, to hold it together like glue. So right now let's go through two of the methods of how to set up a compare and contrast essay. They are point by point or block method. So let's take a look here at the thesis. Here we're going to say both cats and dogs make excellent pets. So they agree that cats and dogs make excellent point. pets, both means to compare. But an appropriate choice depends on the pet owner's lifestyle, finances, and household accommodations. So this thesis, this thesis is very clear. We're going to compare and contrast the differences between owning a dog and cat. What kind of lifestyle do you have? What kind of finances? And what kind of household accommodations do you have? Which would be better for you? a cat or a dog based on these three subtopics in this excellent thesis. So let's take a look here, point by point. If you go point by point, the first point is lifestyle. So the topic sentence would be, cats make less of an impact on an owner's lifestyle. Here they have uh, cats and dogs because we're going to go point by point. So we're not really focusing on cats and dogs. We're going to focus on the point, which is lifestyle. So the lifestyle, we're going to discuss cats. And the other point about lifestyle, we're going to discuss dogs. So here we're discussing point by point. The first point was lifestyle. And we bring in both subjects, cats and dogs. All right. Now here, cats make less of an impact on owners' lifestyles than dogs. Maybe I would add than dogs. But I'm okay here. I just like my topic sentence to be very clear. Because if I'm, if I'm going to mention dogs in this paragraph, I think the word dog should be in the topic sentence. However, I, I would understand what you mean by this. So we're going to continue with the point by point. So this was the first body paragraph. The second body paragraph is going to be about finances. And since we're going to talk about finances, we're going to talk about cats and dogs. The finances of the two. And then the last one was household accommodations. Body paragraph three would be about household accommodations between cats and dogs. And then, oh, excuse me, why didn't they get that? Excuse me, guys, I want to go back and write this a little bigger. Then your conclusion paragraph would be here. So this ended up being four paragraphs. So to me, that would be a short essay. And uh, point by point would be better for short essays. If you're going to write something longer, I would go with the block method. 
So before we jump there, I just want to review quickly. Point by point method, you go by the aspects. What were the aspects here? Aspect one, lifestyle. Aspect two, finances. And then aspect three, household accommodations. Come over to the block method. The block method, we're going to go topic or subject because the block method is called uh, subject by subject. So the subjects here are cats and dogs. So topic one, cats. We're only going to talk about cats and then we'll list all of the aspects. Topic two. Topic two was dogs because we're only doing cats and dogs. Talk about dogs. Then here, you can have an optional paragraph that adds that is sort of an evaluation of your first two paragraphs, bringing it together, and then your uh, summary paragraph. Okay, good. Now, here, I want to look at these again. Point by point, cats, dogs, cat, dogs, cat, dogs, cat, dogs, and we bring in each of the aspects or the subcategories in the thesis statement. Block method, you list all of the cat's points first, and then next you list all of the dog's points first. If this were a longer essay, I would say go point by point. Lifestyle, finances, households, etc. This way the reader is really current. They know what you're talking about. But look at the block method or the subject by subject. If you talk about cats all the way through, and it's a long essay, and then you finally jump to dogs, the time you get finished giving the points about the dogs, your reader may have forgotten about, well, what was it like for the cats? So I would break this better for a longer essay as a point by point. And I think that's how, from my master's thesis in English, I did mine point by point. I compared two authors, one from England and one from here, from the United States. And I did go point by point because it was a 26 page paper. Can you imagine if I only talked about Edgar Allan Poe for the first 13 pages and then I talked about the author from England for the last 13 pages? The time you got to page 20, you'd be like, uh, what did Kevin say about Edgar Allan Poe? So I would do point by point for a longer paper. The rest of this handout, go through by yourself, brainstorming, use a Venn diagram here. They give you a nice way, a nice outline to set up your essays. And I think, and I've noticed that, not I think, I know that students who do pre-writing and planning, their essays are a lot better than students who do not. So, because they're organized. This is the PowerPoint of Compare and Contrast. I will put this document in Canvas as well. Thank you.